refrigerate milk in Europe. But anyway, uh, let's catch you up on a few stories that should be on your radar today. It is time for Rapid Fire. Here with their takes, Robert Frank, Seema Modi, and Dominic Chu. And we are going to talk beyond meat to some extent. Well, let's just wait till we get there. But first, let's talk some iRobot. Uh, the maker of the robotic vacuum cleaner, the Roomba, is down sharply today after saying tariffs from the U.S.-China trade war will weigh heavily on revenue. The company lowered its expectations for 2019, guys. And the real question is, is this a barometer telling us something about the economy? Is it a just unfortunately they're hit hard by this? Or is it a, hey, the company looking for excuses type of story? Well, this is a company that is a classic U.S.-China trade war loser. Not only did it talk about the tariff-related costs that it's continuing to see over the past couple of quarters, but tariffs are also, they say, pushing the economy in China to weaken even further. So that's hurting demand for a lot of their products. As we discussed even last quarter, this is one of those companies that is taking one of the, a proactive approach to move some production out of China. It said the same thing this quarter. They're diversifying their manufacturing China strategy, moving production to Malaysia by the end of 2019. But here's the catch. Moving production is expensive, and they say expect prices to go up. Wow, as they face competition from lower prices, like the shark, now you can get this technology mm. in cheaper ways. Yeah, and prices to me is the key here. I wonder to what extent it is an excuse. Their new model of the Roomba is $1,100. Yeah. I mean, but in a way, that I think is that's, a lot for it. It's, and it's the a big lot innovation is they squared the top <laughs> so that it can now do corners. <laughs> We wow. Have it. How Showing, it take it's behind Robert's out. head, so you can see what we're talking about. But but you're, and there it is by, on our on our uh, big screen back there as well. Yeah. I mean, for, if, for, uh, if you're paying anywhere from seven hundred to a thousand plus dollars for an autonomous vacuum cleaner, you are not likely going to be as price sensitive to a increase because of tariff related issues or, or anything else. Or right. it's an extra two hundred and fifty dollars on top of. The, the 1,000. So if it's 25% tariff, that so that my point is it is expensive, and a, and a 25% tariff on a really expensive price gets to be meaningful at that level. I'm gonna I'm gonna take the other side of this just because we want some balance here. I would say no. That I want to know what you I, really think. No, no. no, no so, so what I really think is I don't own an iRobot. I, I we tend had to kind one of for like a while. I have a, I have I do have a Dyson. I just bought a new Dyson. And, and they're expensive, they're, they're, they're expensive well. too. But you juxtapose this story against Texas Instruments, yes. which by the way hit a record high yes. today amidst this. Their CFO is saying that they don't have any impact in terms of their business dealings in China because of the U.S.-China trade war or anything else. And they, they are much more of a barometer, I would argue, yes. for the global economy because their chips go into everything from dishwashers and vacuum cleaners to guided missile systems and everything else. And so th this they're is just probably a, a better indicator. Yeah, and this is like for one, a few targeting a very niche market, I guess. <laughs> yeah. I would All right. Uh, topic two, what makes a burger a burger? According to a number of states, it's meat. And states like Arkansas, Missouri, and Mississippi are passing laws to keep it that way, saying only foods made from animals should have labels like burger, sausage, or hot dog. Arkansas is being sued by makers of plant-based foods like tofurkey, also by the ACLU. They're claiming it violates freedom of speech. Uh, but this could affect companies like Beyond Meat, although they're not directly suing over it. Those three states have one very big thing in common. Farmers. Mm. Or not, what do you call them? Ranch they, they, those three states have a, a disproportionate amount of their economy driven by meat processing. And we're talking about Missouri, oh, Arkansas, meat. and Mississippi. Processing. Mississippi Mississippi is also one of the biggest poultry mm -hmm. states in America as well. So you can see why there would be a bit of a pushback against the use of meat in those terms, because these are true meat-producing states in America. That's why their lobbyists have been added. You know, Kelly, we talk about big tech putting a lot of money towards lobbying efforts. Yeah. The meat industry, the U.S. Cattle Association, has been putting more money towards lobbyists for a long period of time for this very reason, and it looks like this could potentially be a win for them. The milk issue is an interesting uh, sort of That's predecessor. That's immediately what I thought about. Here, yeah. right. So, but yeah. as far as I can tell, when you buy almond milk in the store, they're allowed to use M-I-L-K. Is that right? Like, they can yeah. use the, the term so the, the dairy industry presumably lost that one. The FDA commissioner said almonds don't lactate. Well, apparently <laughs> you can't legislate out the dictionary. And so if you say it's flourless cake or it's meatless whatever, yeah. the first word tells you that it doesn't have that product. And so I, I just think this or is... Or eggless mayo. Remember when, what was the, the big mayo... <sighs> Yeah, when like they the, used olive oil to make mayo. Yeah. Yeah. And, it, and they said, well, it's not really mayonnaise. I mean, the first word, e-books are not made out of paper. And if, if you can't figure that out, you've got bigger problems. <laughs> so you think they should be able to use whatever language they Absolutely. need to, con to convey Absolutely. And I think that's where it'll go. But so far, the courts have said, the and California courts, as I think I said, look, that's ridiculous. If it's two words and the first word is something else, you know it's not a problem. Okay, fine, because the real newsflash I was going to say is that Robert Frank might, might need a breakfast sandwich at Dunkin' yeah. made with the Beyond Sausage. Ooh. Yeah. Because I'm thinking sausage can't go, beyond meat sausage can't go bad. <laughs>
can regular sausage At least that's what we think bad? at this point, right? <laughs> that's what we think. That's I what eat, I want to know, viewers. Can, can meatless meat go bad? That's when, that's Or when does it go bad? That's just my, my flexitarian tweet, diet. Tweet Robert Frank. Uh, topic three, UPS is up big today. Uh, after reporting earnings and announcing several new initiatives, they're expanding to seven-day-a-week delivery starting next year. They've revealed a new partnership with Michaels to expand access point services where you can go pick up your packages. They already have it with CVS and Advanced Auto Parts. And perhaps most surprising, UPS says it is applying to the FAA to fly drones for delivery over people at night and out of the line of sight of the operator. The shares are up 8.5% today. It's a huge move. So, so this is all about getting access and reaching more people. We, we heard that FedEx did the same kind of a thing with Dollar General to kind of promote access to rural areas, yeah. especially in America. But this is a big deal because what this does is start to shift the paradigm in shipping, right, away from just the straight, hey, the truck shows up at your doorstep. Now you can go get things. You can get them every day of the week at all of these locations. It just signifies that we as a consumer group in this country are treating things differently with, with regard to how we buy and yeah. how we get them. And it could be a way to remake retail. We talked earlier, Mnuchin was on this morning saying Amazon's destroyed the sector and so forth. I mean, there are ways that they might be responding by saying, how, here's how to embrace e-commerce and make you and maybe still keep some of that foot and traffic. Instead of just allowing Amazon to eat their lunch, UPS and even FedEx are saying we're going to take measures to make our shipping strategy uh, a bit more efficient. I still feel bad. I mean, the seven-day deliver every time I'm like oh, but I know that people can still get a day off it's not like the people have to work seven days but there's not call me old-fashioned topic <laughs> four: food delivery service DoorDash backing down on a controversial tipping policy known as a guaranteed minimum so here's basically how this worked the company guaranteed the delivery people a set fee for their drop-offs those consumer tips well DoorDash would just pay the difference between my tip and what they had already guaranteed workers, so they keep the difference, DoorDash would. The CEO is now saying in the near future the company will ensure that workers' earnings will actually increase by the exact amount of customer tips. I don't know how this would work. The, the old way is the way that the restaurant industry has been doing business for decades. Mm -hmm. So this was not a, a, a terrible DoorDash innovation or something. If they're now saying we're going to pass every dollar along, is that going to hurt the business well, they, model? They, why didn't they just say, we'll make sure your tips go to the delivery person? Right, that's Some, all it's they had very, to say. It was a very bizarrely legalese way sure of saying really their earnings need. will increase by the same amount as you. When I, when I click on those delivery services, and I always give an extra tip, 20 to 25%, I just assumed it was going to that delivery. I did everybody, too. everybody does. And, and it, yeah. it is shocking to me that the company was taking that and not giving it but to But it the, turns out that's people. kind of how the restaurant industry works. Well, no, it doesn't. Well, the restaurant industry, it, it, you, it kind of doesn't, it kind of doesn't, right? Because they pay a lower, they, they can get away right. with paying a lower yeah. minimum wage because you're in a tipped, if you're a server, you get like, say, two twenty-five an right. hour. So we are paying hour, the difference. Get, correct. So they don't get minimum wage because we contribute because we to contribute that. Because we contribute and we wage. make up for the fact right. and we get them back up to a minimum plus wage at right, that point. Right. But at so least, this is kind of like that, but not, I mean, you still would expect, like with Uber or Lyft, they tell you explicitly that your tips go to the drivers by yeah. the time it's all said and done. I was just curious from a PR perspective why they wouldn't have done that to be. I mean, as anyway. someone who orders a lot of food online, <laughs> one way to get around this is to use a cash tip. The problem is I don't always have cash in my wallet. I'm one of those millennials who increasingly buys everything online. You can't and Venmo them. It's on credit stuff. cards. And some, and I tried that can. recently. I tried that recently, and the guy said, "No, we can't accept any cash tips. Really? You, you have to do it through the app." So wow. he was actually telling me I couldn't do that. But That's why I assumed it went to him. I, and I agree. We, we need more information on how this is going to work, especially yeah. as these companies look to go public. Guys, thanks. No time for the waffle shoot. We'll have that in Power Lunch. Uh, Robert Frank, Stephen Modi, Dominic Chu.